This is the most overused word in manga. People use it for just about any kind of story. But for a while now, I've noticed that this is an especially big problem in the anime and manga community. You'll see people say that this series sucks because there's no stakes, or that series is turned into the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse because it has no stakes. Which is a perfectly valid criticism. Stakes are important in a series. Otherwise, there's no point in reading the story. The story has to have some kind of payoff. But here's the problem. The way people talk about stakes, they use it to talk about just about everything. If there's not enough character deaths, then there's no stakes. If there's deaths but the story just repeats itself, then there's no stakes. If a fight gets dragged out or a fight has no buildup, then there's no stakes. See the problem? Just using the term stakes to diagnose a problem in writing doesn't precisely identify that problem. But that's what everyone does. So the problem is that stakes has become this catch-all criticism that people use all the time. And as a result, it doesn't really explain what the actual problem is. And in some cases, it actually misconstrues it. So to fix that problem, let's break down what we really mean when we're talking about stakes, when stakes are important, and to what extent they're important, so that we can better diagnose these kinds of issues in manga. By definition, a stake refers to what someone has invested. For example, in the context of business, a stake refers to the size of your share in a company. More commonly, in gambling, a stake refers to what someone has wagered. So if you buy into a game of poker for, say, $500, then you have a $500 stake in that game. You could even go so far as to say that if you wager $100 on a hand, then your stake in that hand is $100. So when we use the term stake in writing, when we ask what's at stake, another way of putting it is what's the wager? What's on the line? What has been invested in the outcome of the fight, arc, or story? And I'm going to continue to use this poker example because it's actually pretty helpful. Because say you play a game of poker with a few friends, and you have one friend who barely bets anything and just continues to bet as little as possible. Well, obviously you're not going to invite him to the next game, because he's not throwing anything into the game. With no stakes in the game, why is he even playing? And the same goes for stories. If there's nothing at stake, then why bother reading the story? But where this becomes a problem is when people mistakenly believe that if you up the ante as a way of speaking, then you automatically make the story better. In a poll I recently posted, 29% of people on YouTube and 46% of people on Twitter said the more stakes, the better. That means that one to two out of every three people honestly believe that you automatically make the story better by adding more stakes. And while that is true in some cases, it isn't always the case. And there's really no better example of this than in Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball is a series notorious for continuously raising the stakes. First, it's the fate of the planet at stake. Then it's the fate of Earth and Namek. Then the galaxy. Then the entire universe. Then all of the universes. The stakes get higher as the story goes on. But most people will tell you that after a certain point, it doesn't matter. In fact, Dragon Ball Super, as fun as it is, often gets memed on for just throwing super on everything and raising the stakes to absurd levels. It's just like a game of poker. If you bet nothing, then there's nothing to play for. But if you continuously go all in every single hand, then you go full throttle every turn without allowing the game to properly develop. And nobody else wants to play because they know you'll just go all in every turn regardless of the cards on the table. Thus, you run into the problem where everything is at stake, yet nothing feels like it's at stake. Obviously, if you just focus on stakes, in other words, what's been wagered, then you're going into the problem with a narrow viewpoint. Thankfully, this problem solves itself once you understand how stakes are only one piece of a bigger problem. But before I explain why that is, make sure to like the video if you're enjoying it so far. It's the easiest way to support the channel, and it helps spread the video to other viewers like you. Okay, so to understand why people mix these things up, let's look at two common areas where stakes usually come up. In the broader sense, people usually bring up stakes when they're talking about the plot. For example, you have axle beats explaining how stakes act as character motivators, as well as consequences for actions in the story. You also have Broken Ronin describing stakes as the reason you invest in a story. It's the what's the point of why you're reading the story. Essentially, stakes in the plot incentivize you to read the story. Why read Naruto? To watch him become Hokage. 
Why read One Piece? To find the One Piece and uncover a centuries-old mystery. Without stakes, there's no point. But like we mentioned with Dragon Ball, more stakes doesn't necessarily mean better story. Why is that? Well, in the case of Dragon Ball, it always seems to be that Goku or one of the other characters gets a super power-up to deal with the super problem. Then they have to come up with a super super problem because now Goku is super whatever. But it's not as entertaining because by this point we know Goku will just become a super super whatever. In this example, there's stakes. The stakes literally get bigger and bigger. But something else is missing. Instead of asking what's the wager, what we need to ask is something else. And that something else is conflict. See, the reason Dragon Ball feels like there's no stakes is because there's no real conflict. There's always a conflict, but because it's Dragon Ball, we know how this is going to happen. There's no real threat to the status quo. In other words, there's no tension. Tension being that feeling of suspense as we wait to find out what will happen. There's no tension in Dragon Ball because we know everything will turn out okay. And this brings us to the other area people usually bring up stakes, and that's when we're talking about character deaths. The biggest criticism I will see is people saying that a story has no stakes because the characters never die, or the characters seem to die but they always come back. Here the issue isn't what I'm investing in. It's more focused on risk. In other words, if you read a story where people are fighting, there should be a certain level of risk in that fight. Something to lose. And if all the characters ever do is win, then those fights are boring simply because there's no risk. Like we've said before, there's no tension. This is why a large number of people responded to my polls claiming that stakes are more important for action series than other kinds of series. Particularly when compared to comedy series. But see, while this is partly true, it all goes back to that idea that more stakes doesn't mean better story. Because when we talk about stakes like this, it leaves one to believe that action series are generally better than comedy series because they have more stakes. Or simply that you cannot compare the two because you have to write an action story differently than you would a comedy story. But the two aren't that different. The only meaningful difference is in how they aim to entertain. One does it by making you laugh the other by delivering cool fight scenes. But they're both stories at their core, and all stories more or less have the same structure. A setup, a conflict, and a resolution. We all know what setup is, we've already talked about conflict, and the resolution is just how that conflict gets resolved. Generally, people tend to focus on conflict when they're talking about stakes, but stakes could just as easily refer to the setup, because the setup is the premise. That's why I personally don't like using the term, because it could mean either of these two things as well as a myriad of other terms beyond this story arc structure. But what it doesn't refer to is the resolution, how the conflict gets resolved. And that's where the stakes test people cling to fall short. Because focusing on stakes helps you with the first two, but it completely ignores the last part. You could have all the setup in the world, all the conflict, but it's how you end things off that ultimately determines the quality of the arc as a whole. It's for this reason that many shonen fans might enjoy a series with supposedly no stakes like Kaguya-sama over in action series like, say, Black Clover. Because as much as I love Black Clover, there's no real tension in a lot of the more recent chapters. Meanwhile, people are addicted to Kaguya-sama because each episode consists of tension that builds up as the characters work towards some ridiculous resolution or punchline. And yet, if you were to just talk about stakes, Black Clover would have to be the better series. Because more people die in Black Clover and the fate of the Clover Kingdom is at stake. Whereas in Kaguya-sama, all we care about is if Kaguya will find out that Shiragane likes her. It's not just about what's at stake, it's also about how you get there and how that outcome is delivered. And there's no better example of this than Seinfeld. What better example of stakes than a show famously about nothing? Well, funny enough, the show about nothing is still more entertaining than most manga, and that's because it's a master of tension and delivery. For example, one of the best episodes is The Junior Mint. In this episode, Jerry starts dating a girl and can't remember her name but he doesn't want to ask what her name is. All he knows is that it rhymes with a female body part. So we start there, 
we see him and George list off every possible female body part. As it goes on, we get more invested as we sit there and try to guess what her name could possibly be. The tension builds as Jerry comes up with one scheme after another, all until his cover is finally blown and the girl breaks up with him. It's at this point at the very end of the episode that Jerry finally remembers her name, runs to his window, and shouts out to the streets, you have that awkward setup, all of the absurd buildup, the comedic tension as Jerry struggles to figure out what his girlfriend's name is. All of that only makes the delivery of the already funny name that much better. And yet, what was really at stake? A guy trying to figure out the name of his girlfriend in a show about nothing. Here is what I mean when I say that stakes is not the catch-all term everyone wants it to be. Everyone focuses on what's at stake, which is certainly important. If there's nothing to gain, then why bother? If there's no consequences, then why bother? But stakes are only one part of the game, one part of the story. Instead of asking, what's the wager? What we should be asking is, how does the story build up to and deliver the wager? Comparing these two parameters clearly shows the flaw in the first one. It's an easy way to describe when a story is lacking setup or conflict but it's only one part of the problem and can even create more problems than it solves. And that is why stakes is the most overused word in manga. But maybe you disagree. How important do you think stakes are? What role do they play in story arcs? Share your thoughts and see what everyone else has to say down in the comments. I'll pick my favorite and share it as comment of the week on my community tab. And if you'd like another discussion like this one, then check out my recent video on JJK. In that video, I explain why Yuji is a good main character, even though he's always on the sidelines. You can find that video in the playlist linked right here. Until then, thank you for watching, and I hope to hear from you soon.